Puga Samba. And he is the MP for Nyendo Mukungwe in Masaka City, Masaka District. Thank you so much for welcoming us into your beautiful home here in Chengira, Honorable. So humble this morning. <laughs> Indeed. Good morning, viewers. And it's now such as six months since you uh, were appointed the leader of opposition. Uh, this task is not an easy task. Do you think, where you see it, is it something, is it a task that you think has, the Lord has been heavier than you expected it to be? Not any less, not any more, um, because um, I, I mean, I appreciate the kind of uh, terrain. Uh, from the onset, I knew the kind of rough ride that I was going to encounter, and therefore I, I set out to take it in my stride. So there are apparently no surprises so far. Uh, so I set out to do it the way I would confront this kind of terrain. And um, it was meant to be additive, and that's what it is. Uh, over time, we would, we would uh, find our way and... Uh, mm get to the point where we we want to be but six months yeah i'm content with the fact that uh, we are moving stuff as rough but we we are prepared for it mm -hmm. from the onset we are prepared and we continue to to work to make a difference despite the fact that we are relegated to a position where we are not meant to be probably on another day you'd be speaking to the prime minister not the leader of the opposition. Mm. But um, that is the reality of uh, the tribulations of our politics, of our, our market politics in Uganda. When you talk about uh, you could have been the prime minister, yes, indeed, this last Friday we saw, it was the 14th of January, a year after that disputed election, at least from your side, you disputed this election. But still we see that seems to be the opposition seems to have accepted the situation and accepted to move on. In the alternative, what would we expect the opposition to do? We went to court because uh, we are not a rebel group. We are a political party. When the election was stolen, we set out to pursue well-established constitutional means of seeking justice. We went to the Supreme Court to challenge that fraud uh, unfortunately, the court, for one reason or another, set out to frustrate our efforts challenging this uh, fraud. And you almost pu you, you did pull out at the last at the tail end of the show. It doesn't matter at what stage you pull out, but the fact is, we were prepared to challenge this fraud. And um, of course, as a lawyer, I know that courts um, are enjoined to to pursue justice without undue technicalities and. Uh, it was very frustrating seeing um, the, 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 the Supreme Court doing its best to frustrate the pursuit of justice. And as uh, citizens, we, we had uh, limited choices. Would we go and uh, burn down the, the Supreme Court because they had uh, refused to listen to us? We withdrew and explained the, to the country the circumstances under which we withdrew and uh, the beauty is that uh, you, you people were airing all these developments and the whole country was in shock that the a court would uh, uh, depart from its own precedent because in, in, in the earlier petitions, the court did allow the very issues we did ask for uh, to be allowed time to put ourselves together and be able to raise a formidable and coherent challenge in court. But uh, unfortunately, the court departed from its own precedent, which is really unprecedented. Isn't this a show of, uh, and you from the opposition, a show of, and you feel that you are not contented with the judicial system in Uganda, the way it execute, executes its work, its mandate, and you would ex be expected every now and then you keep running to the courts of law. Even now, there are some cases that you're still chasing in the courts of law. And yet, on the other side, you seem to... Uh, keep uh, pointing at the holes and the gaps within the judicial system. The, the justice law and order sector is multi-layered, and uh, well as it feeds into uh, each of the layers. But the way it's set out is such that uh, each of the layers at one stage 
has some level of independence to make its own decisions. So we, we cannot blanket, we cannot blanket the entire uh, issue system as convoluted. But at that stage, that matter was badly handled. We are alive to the fact that uh, judicial officers uh, are various, both in, uh, in, in character, in appreciation of the issues, probably including um, some level of uh, inclination. We are aware of those who are sworn cadres of the, the regime, and they're not shy to make it known to all and sundry. So we are alive to these uh, uh, challenges. That does not um, provide space for us to indict the entire judicial system. Did you expect anything new from that court case? Because this was not the first time the opposition going to, heading to the courts of law. 2016, 2011, you've been in the courts of law, but we haven't seen an election being overturned in Uganda, like it has happened in Kenya and elsewhere. You, you see, you, you must have some degree of faith in uh, this kind of uh, pseudo-democracies to do some work. First of all, uh, since the first electoral challenge uh, after the restoration of multi-party democracy, um, the, the same individuals that were um, uh, uh, on, 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 on the bench are not the same people. So people have changed. The environment has changed since. So, the, so many issues have since uh, changed. So you'd expect some degree of departure, some lessons from the past a follow-up on precedents, and you would expect that uh, at this stage, this court has learned a lot from um, uh, some of the situations that were encountered by their predecessors, and uh, out of uh, sheer faith, you thought that uh, we would do better, because um, the earlier decisions uh, in a way changed the, our jurisprudence, and you'd expect that uh, we would have lessons uh, that some of the lessons have, we are now aware that some of the lessons actually served mm -hmm. to even um, um, change the thinking and uh, uh, the, the, the way the decisions are made. So when you think about uh, the manner in which court moved to arrive at this decision, you, you do have a dissenting opinion of Justice Chisache, you get to understand how an insider is equally frustrated with the manner in which her colleagues you did conduct themselves in this very manner, including mm. indicting their failure to hold on to their own president as a Supreme Court. And of course we haven't had any any hearing because she was of course she took some sick leave and we were expected maybe her issues would be addressed by now. But this is the third time as the MP for Masaka, you have, having been an MP for Masaka municipality before. What's your view about this current parliament from, uh, as, from the opposition and from the other side? The current parliament is still taking shape. And uh, I want to believe that even its leadership is still uh, fine this footing. It is yet to be tested. Um, remember that um, the attrition rate uh, from the 10th Parliament is almost 78 percent. So only about um, 22 percent of members from the 10th Parliament returned. So you have uh, so many new faces, so many young members of Parliament, inexperienced, and uh, they're trying to find their way in the corridors of parliament and get you to learn how things are done. My sense is that um, along the way, it could get better, probably past the kind of test the previous parliaments failed. The 10th parliament is indictable for failing the agility test and including failing to uh, stand well, you up. Said. Of course, mm. but the beauty is that uh, there's no collectivity. In the parliament, you stand on your, on your ground and speak out your view. Let's, that's for what moment, let's first stick to this current parliament. Yeah. What is your frustration, especially from your fellow opposition members of parliament? 
as the leader of opposition, what's your favorite, what's your biggest first disappointment amongst these MPs? You you'll have to do a lot. You have to work your socks off, your gloves off to frustrate me. I am the leader of this team, and um, I gave my team a chance to learn what I wanted them to learn. I gave my team a chance to find their bearing. And this team has never failed to follow my guidance. When I need them for the bigger part, they are available. When I say for the bigger part, I do not mean 100%. Yeah. The only little bit of challenge is that uh, the seniors that were expected to be around and guide uh, the, the young members to, on how things are done, to be able to hold, to build the kind of cohesion you expect. Um, the, the, some of the seniors, not all, some of the seniors and key seniors are either uh, absent for the better part of the house sittings, or actually some of them are in corners cutting deals. You encounter them in the meetings when you want, where you want to strengthen uh, opposition positions only to hear them defending the, uh, the regime position. Mm -hmm. It's a shock, uh, but for me, it's not a frustration. You know, when you talk about cohesion and cutting deals, some of the accusations, at least from the public domain, are uh, that some members of the NUP, National Unity Platform, that, uh, the, uh, that is the word from the, of the public, that there is, there, some of them have backs, they are taking a back seat from where they were expected to be at the fore as the opposition. That, and this is part of the issues that they are saying that is causing this harmony within the party. I think we are addressing two different things. First of all, NUP has the biggest number of new members of parliament. Sure. New That's and young. It was only prudent that these members are helped to learn how work is done. From NUP, the bulk of my senior members are available. They are either chairing committees uh, or they are shadow ministers. And when I need them, I am content with their input so far. And um, if I am aware of any member cutting a deal, I will be the very first person to date that member. So far, I regard them as rumors because I'm not so sure that anybody would point to an NUP member, senior or junior, as being known cutting deals around Parliament. You know, the House of Parliament and certain land corridors is a very dicey and delicate environment. And the one can easily be misconstrued. And uh, the talk about NUP is legitimate because NUP is the biggest party in Parliament. And therefore, whatever goes wrong, the first party to indict would be NUP. So, but the support to the indictment is misinformed because I can touch and feel each of my members. You know, in Uganda, where there is fire, there is a small But I've seen smoke, smoke coming out of a garbage heap without fire. But at least, have you, have you seen that? But at this stage, it's, it's an indication that maybe all is not well. Wait, see. Uh, no, uh, all is not well in our politics. It's not true that all is not well in NUP. Everything is wrong about our politics. And for me, as somebody very interested in uh, democratic governance, that should be the conversation, not a conversation about NUP. The conversation should be about a regime of 35 years appropriating making power. Th making 36 next Wednesday. Suddenly appropriating power, stealing national resources, violating human rights. You know, up to now, the regime in power has elected to solve political scores by arresting its opponents. As I speak, they're still arresting NUP leaders from different regions. The latest was from Kasese, because they were found holding a meeting. The ruling party is able to hold meetings across the country. That's a crime for NUP members and leaders across the country to hold meetings. Each of the meetings they are holding is treason. This should be the conversation. And I want to invite the media to move away from this triviality. In fact, the media is indictable to, for conniving with the regime. I'm not talking about NTV. I'm talking about the media practitioners are indictable for allowing you know, the I'll ruling party. Let me make this uh, okay, very clear. Sure, sure. To get away with crime every day. Mm. 
Of course I am aware that particular media houses have, very, have been very helpful in highlighting some of the violations, and we appreciate. I think the bigger national conversation, the bigger torch, the bigger light must focus on the action of the ruling party. The emerging young party called NUP is a younger party, must go through the formation stages, you know, to formally form and be able to get to a point where it can cover and even surmount some of the... You know, Honorable Matthias Mpoga, when you indict the media, I know so many young journalists who are professional, have been on the front, have been, even where uh, some members of NUP haven't been there, they've been on the front. And when they report stories where you maybe think that they are negative on your side, you label them as propagandists, uh, those who have been bribed, this isn't the way we should view the democracy, the good governance, and the cordial relationship between the, the leadership from all parties, but also with the media. Freedom of I, I appreciate you. So do you realize that it's very dangerous to blanket NUP if they are individuals? that probably cut deals. It's not that it's the policy of NUP to cut deals. The same way, and, and I was very clear, particular media houses, not a blanket accusation, particular individuals and media houses have made it their point, their policy, to either malign, to try and circumvent, to divert. My, the, the debate should be about the actions of the regime in trying to scatter to space, to squeeze space, arrest its opponents, and charging them with, with frivolous charges, but and the failure to, to prosecute their own accusations, that, that should be the national debate. But I would until This is a loose talk that is loosely should be, uh, you, this is the time that you as the opposition should have been more united than ever, but we see that even up to now, the top political parties Everyone is working his, his or her own way. This is the best way to build a party for democracy in our country. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yes, uh, because um, the emergence of NUP to some of the, uh, the traditional parties was a bit of a shock. And um, for, I mean, for some reason, the opposition changed leadership in parliament. And that's also the first time it's happening since multi party was restored. It, it, it kind of rattled um, some circles in the opposition rank and file, and it, it attempted to, to fracture um, our opposition front. Um, as leaders in parliament and outside parliament, we have been working the lines trying to defuse. Um, these kind of fissures, and um, I am content that we are somewhere. However, there are still individuals that are still not, you know, satisfied, uh, and I don't think they are honest in their dissatisfaction. The problem, the, the, uh, the, the uh, deal cutters, and uh, they feel frustrated that the space from where they were cutting deals was occupied uh, because. I do not find any plausible reason under the sun anybody would give uh, in continuing to either fight NUP in Parliament or to try and imagine that it shouldn't be NUP, it should be them. That's for me really uh, gross, gross, you know, uh, political immaturity and um, it does not bode well with the need to unite the opposition. You know, you know when you talk about uniting the opposition, this is the time Maybe members from the other side, DP, FDC, JEMA, UPC, would they be expecting NUP to have this candid conversation about the front that you should be taking in the iPod summit? But NUP has consistently said, no, that is a Tea Party, we will not, we'll not be taking part in that. And this is one of the follow that we'll, you would be using to form that candid conversation. You, you, you know, uh, the, the, the talk about um, iPod makes one imagine that uh, NUP rejected um, something, you know, that is really um, is set out in some law, some written law or something. You know, even when we rejected the iPod platform, we offered an alternative. And that alternative we offered is constitutional, namely 
the National Consultative Forum. One of the reasons why we, we rejected the uh, iPod was because the iPod framework has no legal uh, you know, backing. And therefore, there's no provision for implementing the outcomes of this conversation. And this conversation has been exploited by the ruling party to try and p pick up key pictures to portray as if, you know, they are available to discuss and dialogue. Yeah. Just imagine, for the so many years that we have had iPod, why would you have a violent election in 2001? Was that part of what was discussed? Why would the ruling party imagine that they have a right to rule and others have a duty to participate? in an election. So what has been the essence of having iPod all along? Some members we of the We offer <coughs> that if the parties are honest about dialogue, the constitution provides for the National Consultative Forum, which is convened by the Electoral Commission. You know, when you, were financed, when you were appointed the leader of opposition, some looked at you, I mean those in opposition, some looked at you as the impulga they used to know in 2011, who was part of the FOC, Action for Change, who was part of 4GC, uh, that group that was organizing, for example, the demonstrations work to work that at the height of the increment in fuel prices, which we are at the same situation. You're seeing increase in fuel prices. Many people are leaving their vehicles at home. This is the same situation. They maybe thought this is the Mpuga who is, will be leading us on that front, and you are walking on the left from the right. They were expecting you to use. Now, you, you, you we do not cram approaches. We evaluate situations and uh, the best way of dealing with them. We have held um, meetings internally to figure out what this erupts and where it is going. Uh, initially, when the increments uh, started, the general belief was that it's short term and therefore you don't need to, to, to make you know uh, a storm out of it. And because it has persisted for a week, we also have been prompted to go into an overdrive of consultations uh, from uh, our colleagues and uh, peers and stakeholders on what we need to do about this. And I want to assure the country and viewers that uh, in the next couple of hours, we're going to come out if the government is not unequivocally coming out with uh, a final solution. Mm. They will hear from us. But we do not want anybody to have it crammed that wherever there is a crisis, and Puga will be on the street. You, you know the kind of the, the, the street is part and parcel of what we do to demonstrate. After all, it is lawful in the first place, but it's not a preserve of Matthias in Puga. It's, it can also be done by other people, civil society, whatever. Because I am a leader, I do not wake up to do. Even when you saw to work, it was after consultations, and uh, I want to, to again invite you to appreciate the fact that whatever you do unplanned will not last the distance. You, you know the kind of you, you're better off taking more time planning mm. than planning uh, after. The voices I hear from them, the type of Mpuga, the, that style of Mpuga, uh, they thought that at this time when we see activists being arrested, uh, detained without being produced in court for so long, and when they are produced, some are uh, held in court, even without their lawyers, the kind of Mpuga they would be seeing is the one that when members of parliament their constitution right, even when court pronounces itself, will be the one who will say, this time round, we don't be sitting as members of parliament, not once, but continuously, they will be seeing a Mpuga, a different Mpuga, who is the leader of opposition now. Fortunately, I am the leader. The, those voices should allow their leader to lead them, and not the other way around, okay? Because a leader is privileged to read situations, to read moments and to make choices. That's the distinction. If you are an impulsive leader, then certainly you're going to be making one mistake after another. I am not impulsive. And certainly, for the so many times we have moved uh, in my leadership to act on something, it is after imagination, consultations, and selecting our choices. We are consultative. It's not a one man show. No, it's a consultative leadership, and we agree on whatever position we take at the every moment. For me, this is more satisfying. Instead of saying, uh, you know, 
guys jump, let's jump and go only to look behind and there's no one following you. Mm -hmm. So I am better off consulting and once I get the, the approval tacit or direct from peers, colleagues and uh, stakeholders, then it's best done that way. So we are not impulsive, we are imaginative. Uh, and, and I'd rather do things that way. Not because we do not know how to demonstrate. No, it's because we choose our cho we make our choices after looking at the options at our disposal. And we, we are not sleeping about these options, we are pursuing them. We've and seen different coalitions, formations being set up, especially towards the elections or even within uh, mid midterm. We've had a SUVI, which we belong to then. We've had uh, TDA, the transition, uh, to the TDA, we've had the IPC. Now we know there is a talk, or there is a formation, the People's Front for Transition. Uh, you know, Gemma is part of it. I know some members who left DP, I know the FDC, and some other top politicians. NUP is not part of this, yes, but this was seen as another front, another loot that will be taken by all members of the opposition, maybe to dig out the, the ruling system within the, out of, out, of, out of power. And we are not seeing this kind of talk, this kind of engagement. What's happening? What's, what's, not, what's wrong with the PFT that is keeping you out of it? First of all, the, the, if there were engagements, they were not going to take place in uh, a public park. The engagements have been on, and uh, where particular individuals and groups felt that they're satisfied with uh, the way it is organized, they have moved. But on the broad view of things, we said the front is very okay. We're not opposed to it. As to whether we must directly be in it is another matter. We have not moved to say whoever is doing something in the alternative has a problem or is a problem. For us to be able to dislodge this deep rooted dictatorship. We need to have a uh, multiplicity of fronts and approaches, and whoever will be able to come out with uh, a smarter way of doing it, going about it, for me, is most welcome. So we are not about to say, uh, and we have not said that uh, they are doing the wrong thing. But you see, you, don't you, on the you, you, do, you do not, you do not participate mm. by duress. But you yeah, know, you, on you, the streets of Ka on the streets, but also within the circles of circles of your comrades, they see you, NUP, as the big boys. You feel that ego, ego. You have the ego. You feel you are the big boys around. You have to take the lead. You cannot join whatever alternative, whatever strategy they bring on board. That's also so true. I, I have not seen any member of NUP. Uh, speaking with arrogance or uh, uh, you see being a big boy also gives you a certain level of responsibility and uh, we're exercising this responsibility first of all by listening to the other voices that we're doing so well and when you listen you even advise but we have not moved because the big boys to stop anybody from doing anything I think that that talk is the same talk I referred to in the earlier of some people that believe that NUP does not deserve to live in. And uh, they are the people that are trying probably to bring this mm. talk as congent, and uh, I reject that. Because um, as the leading opposition party, we've been harmed enough, and on so many occasions we've been out. When we came out of the 2021 election, we wrote, our president wrote to all the opposition parties with a view of having a meeting to find a framework for working together. You probably aired the views of some of the leaders in the, in the big parties, the opposition. You aired them. You probably had their feeling about NUP and the kind of question they are raising about NUP and how they felt NUP cannot ask of them to chair a meeting. This for me um, uh, was a very, very uh, bad start. So we are trying to find a framework a mechanism of uh, working together. As you find I, that I mechanism, still, I still contend that uh, there is a lot of room for us to work, and uh, I have no reason to doubt. As you find that mechanism, it's, it's now 36 years. Next week, NRM has been in power for 36 years, and the opposition is still struggling to root him out of power. 
this is the time, is it yesterday that your, your position should have been united at least to see that there is a cause, a formidable force against the NRM? The move, uh, opposition work together is not an option. It's not something that we, we, we need even to, you know, to pretend and uh, think about as one thing that we need a lot of reflection. It's actually a must. If we are going to find a way of uh, making it easy for us to disloy the dictatorship, then we must summon uh, our senses to talk about unity as the most important thing. 35, 36 years of me, some seven and continuing for me is a very terrible thing for this country. I'm really sure Mr. Seven knows it, but somehow he's stuck with himself. But for the opposition, we owe it to ourselves and our supporters to work together. Even when we think that there are certain issues over which we disagree, at least we know we are not disagreeable in the change of government. That alone should unite us. We even know at various fora the issues we think would rather change when the government changes. And therefore, we are on the whole agreeable to the fact that we are late for a new government. As you think about those things that you should agree on, there is a proposal already that's coming your way, it will be coming your definitely, I like it not, of having an, yet again a parliamentary democracy. And there is, I heard that you're going to be having consultative meeting across the country, but you should know that, yes, just like it has happened before, the police, the security agencies will not be giving you a cup of tea as you move across the country. And this is something that touches on the future of our country. And you want us to be an iPod. So you, you, you see the kind of contradictions. Uh, you, you, that's why I say it. The, the kind of questions that should be raised should be to you know, seven and these people whether they are actually willing to democratize this country and see this country prosper and spend less on regime, uh, uh, on regime, uh, you know, uh, stay instead of investing in people and their lives. Certainly, the the proposal to amend the constitution with a view of migrating from the current hybrid to a, a, a planetary system, it is part of the attempt to draw the debate away from democratization. Because in the current situation, elections are, are more or less of a ritual. You know, it used to have become a ritual because we cannot have a free and fair election. When I was presenting my, um, uh, my views as uh, a disabled agenda in Parliament, we, the, one of the biggest components of this agenda is uh, major constitutional and electoral reforms, not piecemeal constitutional amendment as envisaged by the group agitating to change the electoral system. The conversation about, because think about it, what is the cry in the country about our democracy? Is it the mode of election or the fact that the ruling party, the state party, ha is a full brown dictatorship armed and will wakes up every foil and make sure the opponents do not access the people to, to ask for votes and protect the votes. Final so th that should be a conversation. So it's a mm -hmm. diversion from, mm -hmm. uh, from the real issues for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, whereas that would be a conversation worth participating in, mm -hmm. it should be a last conversation. After talking about the key issues, after, after agreeing the mode of democracy we want to have, because before you, you, you go into that, that's a peripheral matter. Are we, are we into this world? The last election is stolen because we are into a uh, we are not in a, 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 a parliamentary system. Thank you, Honorable. Your last words to uh, the viewers of Morning at NTV. Well, first of all, I want to appreciate NTV for uh, uh, giving us an opportunity to share with the country, with the world, our views um, on a number of subject matters. Uh, and invite NTV and other media houses to shine a torch on the regime, especially on human rights violations. None of us is safe in the kind of state of affairs if we continue to allow this to happen. And uh, I want to invite the country to continue making these demands. We appreciate the criticism about the way we work. Mm -hmm. I want to ask people to input in how we work. We are not a closed shop. We're listening 
we observe and are able to change the way we work when we listen to the people. And uh, going forward in 2022, we have already set out on how we want to work. The conversation continues, and uh, I want to assure viewers that you'll see a different MUP. You're going to see the opposition implementing its plans as discussed over the last recess. Honorable Matthias Nsamba, Matthias Mpuga Nsamba, the MP for Nyendo Mukungwe, Masaka City, also the leader of opposition. Thank you so much for giving us this uh, time and also so coming us into your beautiful home, but also sharing with the, our viewers uh, this uh, insights on Morning Attentive. This Stephen Mbide and Pepe Suechuga right now take you back to Idris Matusega in the studios and wish you a pleasant Wednesday morning. Oh, thank you so much for that report, Stephen Mbide. Now it's 53 minutes past 8 a.m. and we come to the end of today's Morning at NTV. But be sure to catch us tomorrow morning from 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. for the best Kickstarter of your day. Now, remember, progress is progress, however small it is. And always share your thoughts on our social media platforms, that is YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Look out for NTV Uganda or myself. Idris Matusegawa and do it responsibly. Well, good morning and catch you tomorrow.